This video is in no way endorsed or sponsored by Surgilum. So guys, I got a delivery today and I want to show you what I think it's going to be. So let's see what's in this box. I think I know what it is. Yes, this is my new Surgilum RoboMarker G2. All right, guys, well, let's get this opened. I've got the box with the Surgilum RoboMarker, RoboMarker G2. Let's open this up and see what's in here. Well, we've got some directions for use. We're probably not gonna read those, but we'll go over them in a little bit. Uh, some warnings about lasers. We're going to put that aside too. And in this little blue box here is the actual RoboMarker. So let's open this up. Now I've been using the RoboMarker for several months now and we have a nice silver one. But this guys, this is the big dog matte black RoboMarker G2. I've been waiting for this forever. I've been so excited about our RoboMarker that I actually custom designed, painted, and put LED lights on the bottom of my Mockamer stool in the OR just to match the colors of my RoboMarker. I'm not... The designer of the RoboMarker is a guy named Alan Brown who runs a company called Surgilum. They've also made devices to help with indirect illumination during DMEC surgery, and we've used that device to, before. The RoboMarker is basically a device used to mark the steep axis of a toric IOL, and you do that by putting one of these little markers on the on the robo marker so you see no matter how you rotate the robo marker it always holds the axis that you marked or that you've placed the prongs at and that way even if you're slightly rotated it's holding the steep axis and you can mark the cornea the tips are actually pre-marked with some gentian violet uh, ink and that, that ink stays on the cornea really really well you can program the RoboMarker or customize it to the way you like, and I'll go over how to do that right now. All right, so let's take a look at this RoboMarker. There's three buttons, a front button, you've got a mode button, and on the undersurface you have a little setup button. You also can control things by simply rotating the RoboMarker. To turn the RoboMarker on, hold the rear button, and then it'll light up for you. Mine came pre-programmed with green. This is the corneal marker, which snaps onto the front of the RoboMarker. Uh, in position one, this will be at about 10 to 12 millimeters, and then when you snap it in, it goes to between seven and eight, which is just perfect for making your toric IOL marks. There's a nice viewing system here with a little mark on the uh, clear corneal marker to make it easier to see your axis mark. Now, an issue with the original RoboMarker was that if you happen to contact the cornea asymmetrically, the RoboMarker would pivot, so we used to just hold our finger on the front of it. But now with the G2 RoboMarker, there's a fix for this. If you push on the front of the front button, it hits a little break. So once you push that button, if you contact the eye a little asymmetrically, the RoboMarker is not going to pirouette. And you can see how it's kind of holding its position now as I rotate the RoboMarker. Now, another really cool feature is if you hit the mode button again, it turns on a laser reticle. You can see it here, I'm shining it on my hand. And to make this easier, I'm gonna get a piece of white cardboard. There you can see the reticle, and that shines on the patient's eye to make sure that you are squared up on the patient's eye. And if the RoboMarker is tilted, the reticle will begin to blink. If you rotate way far out of the way, like you see I do here, uh, the, the reticle will actually disappear and you can't see it at all. So keep that thing straight. Now I mentioned you can customize the rubble marker, so let's go over how to do that. Mine came pre-programmed green, but to change that, you hit the little setup button. Uh, I'm using a little stylus to do that, and if you give it a second or two, the lights will begin to blink and, and scroll through a series of different colors. You then hold the rear mode button and just turn the handle, and it'll go through several different colors, and when you find the color you like, you simply let go of the rear mode button and hit the setup button again. That'll lock that color in. You can go through several different colors, and that's the mode I was in when I showed you how I customized my, uh, my OR stool. So we'll go back into the setup mode once again, 
and you can again choose your color this time we'll stick with green hit that setup button one more time and now you'll see the buttons have this breathing red color and uh, i'm gonna have to bring my piece of cardboard back to show you this but by holding the mode button and then rotating the handle clockwise you're going to turn up the brightness of the laser reticle which makes it easier to see but a bit more irritating for patients if you turn counterclockwise it'll make it almost invisible i usually keep the laser set somewhere in the middle which is a good compromise with visibility and not irritating the patient so much once you like the level of the laser let go of the mode button and click the setup once again now I think the only thing left to do is to show you how to shut it off and that's by holding the rear mode button down for a couple seconds and it will power the RoboMarker down. Now one new software upgrade on the newest RoboMarker G2 is that when you are marking your patient when they're looking straight ahead and the laser reticle is on, the reticle can be a little bit bright for patients to look at. So now with the buttons facing at 12 o'clock, your laser is going to be at your brightest set point. And as you rotate the handle, either clockwise or counterclockwise, it's going to dim the laser reticle, which might make it a little bit easier for your patients to tolerate. Now, when you're using this new feature, make sure you don't have your finger pressed down on that front button turning the brake on so you don't rotate the, the marking. You just want to rotate the handle once the laser is dim enough for your patients to tolerate, then hit the brake and you can mark the cornea. So now that we know how to use the RoboMarker, let me show you a couple cases of mine that illustrate how I've been using it. You're looking right towards that red light. There you go. Now I really wasn't sure at first how the RoboMarker would work or if it would be accurate, but I've really come to enjoy it. And you see how great those gentian violet marks are. This is a quick case and it's gonna compare our RoboMarker marks with what the Aura tells us to do. And this is about 15, 20 minutes after I've marked the patient. So you can see that gentian violet is still very easy to see at the, at the limbus. So as usual with cataract surgery, our first job is to get the cataract out of the way. And this was an early case and I really hadn't used the RoboMarker that much. And since this is gonna be a toric multifocal, I wanted to use my, my standard technique, which was to use the Aura. And I use the Aura mostly to use the reticle for toric alignment. So although I'm not going to show it, uh, after filling the capsular bag, we're going to do the Aura um, and then put the toric multifocal in. And what you'll see here is that the marks generated by the RoboMarker, which were based on my preoperative uh, calculations, and the Aura completely over, you know, overlaid each other. And, and typically the Aura doesn't tell me to move the axis all that much anymore, at least not with modern generation formulas. So we've now done this several times and it's really taught me that we can trust the, the marks, at least as much as you can trust your formulas, you can trust the marks by the RoboMarker. Now, torques are not the only thing we do. We struggle for years and years using different kind of centration devices for our haptic fixated and sutured IOLs. And now instead of using all these fancy devices or not so fancy yeah. devices, we're relying more on the RoboMarker, either to mark our 180 degree axis, our 90 degree axis, or whatever axis we think we're going to have to suture the implant in. So this is a case we're going to be doing a lens exchange in the Yamani technique, and those marks at the limbus are generated by the RoboMarker. Now, the first position of the, of the RoboMarker will mark way out into the sclera, but I actually find it easier just to go ahead and mark like it was going to be a toric IOL. So we've then used a caliper to mark where we're planning on making our needle sclerotomies, but they're all based on the initial positioning marks put there by the RoboMarker. So we got our IOL out and we got our summering ring out, the dipotractomy, and now we're putting in our secondary IOL. And again, these needle sclerotomies are based on where the RoboMarker positioned them. And at the end of the case, we now have a nice, uh, nicely centered haptic fixated IOL, which is such a challenge with these cases. So even in non-standard cases, we're using the RoboMarker to help make our surgery easier and probably more accurate. Now there's just one more thing that you should know about the RoboMarker. As long as you have a RoboMarker, there is no reason for you to ever have a crooked picture in your house ever again. Well, look guys, I know this isn't my usual type of video and this is not meant to be a commercial for the RoboMarker, but I've had so much fun using this and found so many ways for it to help me with my patients and with my surgery. I just wanted to share that with everybody else and see what you think about the RoboMarker, if you've used it or not, or if you're using a different technique for marking the steep axis or for marking your patients who need scleral fixated 
IOLs. Thank you so much to Alan and Debbie Brown for making the RoboMarker, supporting it, and allowing me to use it. Hopefully you found this interesting and you can apply it to your patients. Thank you so much for watching.